Okay. Why... Why is my camera so high? What, what is happening here? <laughs> Hold on. HDR streaming is back. Streaming in lower resolution than you're recording at is getting a quality bump and other cool updates just dropped in a brand new OBS 30.1 beta. Let's take a look. Just remember, this is not the Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting beta. That is a completely different beta test that you have to sign in with Twitch and get granted access to. Very limited access at the moment. Also, this is just a beta. It has bugs. Stream Deck users will find that OBS will crash when I, you delete sources, and I keep finding my stream settings corrupting when I try to stream to HDR or stream HDR to YouTube. Yada yada. Don't update your main install. Use it as a portable instance to test, or wait until stable release comes. I'll, I'll make a new video when it's time to update, because inevitably people will ask. The cycle never ends. First, HDR streaming via HEVC over RTMP to YouTube is enabled. I know that was a lot of letters. When YouTube introduced high dynamic range streaming, it required a new protocol to stream instead of the usual RTMP, the standard protocol that we use for streaming to YouTube and Twitch and things like that. This one used the protocol called HLS. This worked fine for some, but struggled on a lot of internet connections with bitrate dropouts, latency issues, and so on. The new RTMP protocol update that came out last year allowed for new codecs like HEVC and the big open source AV1 codec that I talk about all the time at this point to be streamed to YouTube and HDR streaming, but it's taken nearly a year to get that HDR implementation actually working smoothly and whatever. These things take a lot of time. This OBS update brings HDR to the HEVC codec, which just about everyone can use going back to the RX 580 graphics cards on AMD side and GTX 900 series, or at least 10 series on NVIDIA side with uh, YouTube RTMP, but not AV1, surprisingly. This is not supported for HDR streaming at the moment. It will come soon. They're still working on it, but it's a start. Example stream VOD from this update that I streamed this weekend is linked in the description. I have a sample I ran on the RTX 3090, and then my main setup I ran with an RTX 4080. Worked pretty great. Didn't really have any major issues other than HDR being a complete mess for content creation in the first place, which I always talk about. The image slide so source got reworked to load files more easily, remove the memory limit that caused it to loop images before showing them all, which is great improvements I've been wanting. In older seasons of streamer news, I would use an image slideshow for my news topics overlay, and if there were too many topics for the day, for the week, it would just start showing them like in a loop and you loop back to number one instead of showing them all once I got to a certain number. This update fixes that, but you will need to make new slideshow sources for this to work. Existing ones in your scene collections won't function any differently than they already are, which is kind of weird. We now have a handy capture audio option for window and game capture sources to give us the direct audio from those windows or games directly to your OBS mixer without having to add a whole separate application audio capture input source and all of that. Those of you wanting to just capture your game or window audio separately from your full system sound mix can now do so much easier and it's easier to keep them in sync and whatever. Game Capture also has a pre-multiplied alpha option for VTuber renders that generate a transparent background. That's the only scenario I can think of here. There might be others. Sound off in the comments if you know what this is for. I said comments weird there. Com comments? Comment? Comments. Com I don't know what's happening. There's a new HDR to SDR tone mapping filter option that might look a little better for you if you need to manually control those settings. But for just tone mapping without touching it, it's going to look the same. I can't figure out any use case for this myself. A big update in my opinion, is that we now have access to scaling filters for scaling down your live stream in the output settings tab, or I guess scaling up or scaling down either direction and for recording. So if you don't know what this means, this has been a big thing uh, since the NVENC update back in like 2018. When you go to settings and then video, you have two different resolutions, canvas and output. You can use this to size up all of your sources to your exact monitor resolution, say 4K, 1440p, and then have everything, streaming, recording, virtual camera, output a lower resolution, like 1080p. If you do this, you can no longer record a native 4K resolution from your sources. You just have the 1080p output. But you also get a scale filtering option that allows you to choose a scaling algorithm, a bunch of math that controls how your image is scaled down. Bicubic is the safest overall bet for most 3D or live action stuff, as it will get the cleanest, sharpest results. Area can be used for screen captures or pixel art games to get the sharpest and cleanest results there. I have a whole video explaining canvas size linked below, and I dive that into that a bit more as well as scaling algorithms in general in my OBS Definitive Guide course over at glitch.mov OBS. The issue comes in if you want to keep your canvas at full 1440p or 4K for recording, you know, for higher quality YouTube videos or something, but still stream at 1080p for 
Twitch or something. You don't get to choose a scaling algorithm there. And that rescale output option in your stream settings uses a blurry, blurry bilinear fast scaling filter, which just makes everything blurrier. So with this update, we now get to choose the filter that we use to scale down our stream for Twitch, if that's how you do it, which will result in sharper or clearer streams than before, or if you upscale for a YouTube stream. For example, if you game in 1080p, but you want the higher quality YouTube 1440p stream, you can get sharper results there. Free quality upgrade, right there. Easy. This rules. This also fixes the error given when having rescale output checked when trying to record or stream in the AV1 codec. Useful for those, like I said, who uh, rescale their output to 1440p or 4K for YouTube while keeping a native 1080p canvas for Twitch. macOS gets a new capture card device source type. This doesn't actually bring any direct features or functionality. Sadly, still no HDR support for UVC cards on Mac. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, but rather re-implements the capture card device in the new coding language and process that the devs are switching to to optimize for Mac. Currently, it shows less functionality than the older video capture device source, but it has a faster path of getting frames directly into OBS's frame rate buffer, which will improve frame pacing for fast-paced gameplay videos and such like that, which is nice. Those using the new fancy WebRTC or WIP streaming protocols now have AV1 support. Linux users, if you're on the right operating system or have the right install method, Flatpak doesn't currently work for this OBS beta, but it should for later ones, will get an upgrade as well, which gives you AV1 support, which was finally added to VA API uh, for native hardware video encoding on AMD and Intel graphics cards, which is awesome. Uh, that was added in this beta, so you finally have access to some of the GPU AV1 encoders over on the Linux side, which is awesome. And they added a new video capture device source type uh, called, uh, it's just video capture device pipe wire. Neither of these are currently supported in the Ubuntu 22.04 version that I just run, just updated to after my Elgato video, but theoretically they, sh they could work once the flat pack version of the beta is available, so I'll report back then. Uh, <laughs> Linux. Python 3.11 support was added for scripting, replay buffer is improved for simple output mode, and PCM uncompressed audio is now supported in fragmented MP4 and MOV files, thanks to that FFmpeg update that came. I think at the end of last year or early this year. There's lots of more little quality of life fixes, including fixing the issue of VST windows showing the wrong size if you have high DPI scaling enabled at high resolution displays, which drove me nuts. All in all, pretty solid little update they have cooking. You can try out for yourself, but keep in mind that it is still a beta. From the, you can try it out from the OBS GitHub link in the description, report issues in the OBS Discord server. You can learn about another OBS beta going on right now for some big Twitch changes in this video here, or check out my OBS definitive guide course at glitch.mov slash OBS. Be kind, rewind.